Rebuilding a Bernac Vulcan model steam engine toy, part 9. By a strange twist of fate, I find out that this old boiler could be potentially unsafe, owing to the soft solder degrading with age. Something needs to be done to rectify this problem. What you've just seen is the strange twist of fate. The boiler was connected to the compressor via a piece of silicone rubber tubing. As I walked away from the bench, I tripped over the silicone rubber tubing, which in turn dragged the engine onto the floor. It's a wooden floor covered in carpet tiles, so it's not really that hard a surface. The event looks far worse in slow motion. And even slower, the noise is really good. The shaking of the camera is caused by the proximity of the impact of the engine on the carpeted floor. This clip is a flashback to when I fitted the steam pipe and I did notice that the fitting moved slightly. After the impact with the floor though, the fitting is now pointing in another direction. Although surprisingly the flywheel is still OK and not bent at all. Even though I've made a bit of a feature of it in the video, slowing it down and making the sound different, the impact of this boiler on the floor was not very heavy. Apart from changing the position of the steam pipe fitting, what was surprising was one of the bushes inside the boiler snapped off, which surprised me as the impact with the floor was not exactly very heavy. I have no choice but to dismantle the engine and start again. I do not have any confidence whatsoever in this boiler if, just by dropping it on the floor, so much damage can occur. It's a good job that it wasn't in steam at the time, because it would of course have been heavier. Here you can see the damage to the fitting for the steam pipe. It's completely come away from the brass cap of the boiler. Look. Before all the experts make one in and tell me, oh, I shouldn't have cleaned the boiler out with kettle descaler, etc., let me explain. Many years ago, I used to work on Hammond organs. Hammond organs dating from 1935 to the mid-1960s. This job involved a lot of soldering and unsoldering, and what I noticed on the early models was the solder wasn't good at all. Why is that? Well, it's some sort of degradation with age. The solder on this boiler looked like it was all dry joints. This could, of course, be something to do with the reaction of the lead solder and the copper of the boiler and the brass of the cap. When I shake the boiler, you can hear the loose part rattling about inside. I haven't given up on this boiler entirely. What I'm doing at the moment is drilling out the holes to 5 sixteenths of an inch. This is for two reasons. One is to allow me to get the parts out of the hole as well as being able to get a screwdriver in to dislodge the second part. Here they are, two bushes that were soft soldered inside the boiler, and these are used for securing the plate for the water gauge. Once again, this is a view taken with my endoscope, and as you can see, the solder does not look too good in the boiler. This actually did worry me to start with. These two small bushes are not a major problem because they would be held in place by the screws that secure the water gauge fitting. But I ask myself, what about the solder that secures the top cap, as well as the tube plate, even though it is only a single tube plate? Here we go then, disassembly is the opposite of assembly. Except this time it's quicker, because taking the bolts out was much easier than when I put them in, having to hold the nuts in position. Time, I think, for a short interlude while I decide what to do with the boiler. I was going to play some music in the intermission, but I thought it would be a much better idea to run this steam pump in slow motion and let you see it working. If you've watched the series, you will notice that this is the pump that I fitted to my large showman's engine. I have decided to sell the showman's engine and it will be for sale very shortly via the Steam Workshop website. 
The reason for removing this from the showman's engine was when I fitted it and the video of fitting it went live on YouTube for public viewing, I got lots of complaints. You can't fit a pump like this to a showman's engine. It's not the done thing, etc, etc, etc. Some comments were worse than that. I really think that some people have a very tenuous grasp of what life is about. That's it, the intermission's over and I'm looking at the component parts of the boiler. It has a brass cap and a brass inner tube plate and the rest of it is copper. I always intended to give this boiler a hydraulic test and I was going to do this towards the end of the series before steam testing it. I have no confidence whatsoever in the soft soldered joints, so I suppose yes I could re-soft solder the joints, but maybe I should make a new boiler. These holes are going to be redundant, but once I dismantle the boiler I could silver solder a flat plate over all of these holes. That is because I want to fit one of these, a proper water gauge. This is a small water gauge with a 3 sixteenths by 40 thread that would go into this plate on the front of the boiler. But all this really depends on what I see when I dismantle the boiler. I could easily make a new cap for the boiler and a new tube plate and even a new inner tube. I could of course just make a new boiler, copy the design but silver solder all the parts. The main mechanical part, which is the oscillating cylinder and the frame that mounts it to the boiler, really is quite good. And even the crank web with its brass crank pin seems to work. It's been there since the 1940s. I can rework this crank web to fit a stainless steel crankshaft, which will run in phosphor bronze bearings on the main frame. There is some play on the crank pin, but let's be fair, I don't want to get carried away. This is just a simple steam toy, but I want it to be safe. I'm really glad that it did fall on the floor and these problems occurred, because the alternative of the boiler disassembling itself when it's at 15 to 20 pounds per square inch and full of boiling water could really be unpleasant for anybody sat in the vicinity. The mechanical parts and the burner are back in the plastic box. I am currently applying a thick coat of red paint to the flywheel casting. Why am I doing this? Because the casting itself is diabolical. Hopefully when the paint's dried this should cover the fact that the finish of the casting is not good. Just in case you're wondering, the drum sander in the middle is of the quick release type, very useful indeed. And that is it for this episode. The saga will continue. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.